so I had uh, three intended learning targets. Um, I didn't quite get through all of them, but I did at least compare and contrast uh, the spring and neap tides, which was one of the main things I wanted to do. I did have to make a little changes throughout the lesson. I kind of had to adjust based on how long they took, uh, how long it was taking them. There were some areas of confusion or didn't really understand, so I had to kind of back up a little bit. But I think overall, I covered at least two of the learning targets that I originally had wanted to cover. I also uh, referred back to some of the older things that we've been going over, the older concepts, because that was one of the main objectives, was to kind of wrap up uh, this unit. And I did prompt a lot of questions to kind of spark that interest and to get, get their brains going again on that, that concept. I feel like we had a lot of good discussions, uh, class discussions. It took a while in the beginning for them to start opening up, but I think I had to find the right words, the right questions to kind of pull the information out of them because it sort of appeared to me that they were a little bit confused at times, maybe not quite sure. So I, I mean, quickly in my head, I had to kind of think of ways to maybe go a little bit more basic, step back to help them to understand so we can end up moving forward. The tide charts uh, were pretty effective for the students. I think it's very unfamiliar to them. So I think, uh, number one, it's hard for them to learn something new and that small. I, we had a couple comments where the students were saying that it's, it's hard to learn or see a pattern because the boxes or the words and numbers, they're so tiny. And you know they're under two inch blocks and it's, it's hard for a middle school student to really look closely at a bunch of numbers and, and see a pattern. While that was my intention, I think I may have to back up a little bit, uh, maybe go over more about the numbers and really get them to see more specifically what kind of patterns are they looking for. Not just look at the whole sheet, but I might have to kind of narrow it more down to certain topics at a time and see if they can find a pattern with that topic. I did plan for three objectives. It was pretty ambitious to go with three, but um, I was able to at least do a few of them, and the students accomplished a few of the targets. And it's always better for me to have a more plan than less of a plan, because I noticed that if I run out of time, or if the students finish early, they get restless, and then I get my behavior problems. So at least if I plan more than what I would anticipate, it's uh, better off for me. I can keep the kids always busy, engaged, and they always have something to do, and it's related to the, the topic. So the way that my classroom is set up, I, I have groups of threes and tables, and I space them out with the seats as well as the tables so that I have enough room to see what's going on from pretty much any point in my classroom. I can also walk around any, I mean 360 degrees around any table. So that will help me if I gotta talk quietly to a student to help them out, or if I have to address the class at one time, I have access to everywhere and I'm able to, to view almost everything that's going on. Okay, from the time that the bell rings before class, I mean the students have already been trained to come in, they read the board, I have bell work up on the board, homework, uh, the planned classwork for the day, so they're already very used to the routine. So I don't have, I can pretty much be somewhere else. And for the first few minutes of class, I should be able to come back and they're, they're good to go. They started reading, they started their note taking, they started reviewing. Uh, whatever it is that I put up on the board, they should already know what to do. So a lot of preparation, a lot of that was practice. It doesn't come you know, over a couple of days, it took a few weeks to get that down, but that really helps when I'm trying to set up the lesson. I want them to do some pre-reading, we want to maybe reflect a little bit on yesterday so we can catch up and be refreshed for what's going on today in class. I think the students were fully engaged when it was time to take notes. Uh, they were doing their research. They had a little trouble when I, even when I wanted them to be discussing in small groups. Ironically, that's the time when they're, they're quiet. Um, but I do try and push a lot of collaboration, especially if it's just simple note taking. There's uh, a lot of them need support. Um, they all read at different levels. 
So the way that they're paired in their groups is also strategically placed, like I mentioned earlier. Um, so they're all meant for a purpose. And I like when they work together for things like that because they're pulling together ideas. Somebody might catch an idea that the other person might not have. And that kind of tandem or group reading helps to bring out the most. It, it brings out a lot of different perspectives on the topic. I think partially, uh, although the film didn't cover the entire lesson that this would have, I would have wanted it to, uh, the intent was they can actually analyze the tide on their birthday from the tide calendar. So that's coming up real soon. But I felt, I felt that that was the one key uh, personalization to this lesson where they can actually relate to it. Because, I mean, I've seen it in the past where it's personal for them. Yeah, they, they are grouped with people in their month and they're asking each other, oh, when is your birthday? Oh, mine is on that day. So it just brings in that engagement. And with that interest, they're actually more inclined to talk about it, to think about it, and actually pay more attention. So they'll essentially learn it better. I have the students do a lot of writing. A lot of it is you know, note taking straight from the book. But after that, they will have to paraphrase. And I want them to do that together as a group because they share ideas, they talk it out, and it also practices writing. Um, a lot of students, even in eighth grade, have trouble expressing what they mean, especially when they're, ha they're given a definition, but they don't know how to put it into their own words. They can't you know, spit it back out a different way. They have to read it. And we also noticed that a lot of students have trouble even finding the definition. They find a bold word in a textbook and they still they can't pull out the definition and it's, it's sitting right there in their face in the sentence. They're reading the sentence, but they, it doesn't say the definition is. So these kinds of activities, it helps them to not only learn the science concepts, but it's, it's helping out with their English concepts as well. Uh, learning how to find a definition, how to read between the lines, how to paraphrase things, how to summarize. Although I didn't get to it on the film, uh, one of the goals, the end goals on this assignment is twofold was to graph in the middle. And there was a box where they were going to graph the tide on their birthday. So they would set up the data points, the two axes, and they would have to figure out where those dots go and look at the trend line. And a lot of students have a hard time with that. And I know that that's one of the things for our department was to focus on graphing. And it's just one extra way that I can help support that goal and also for math. We did have a few comments on the Tide calendar being too small, and I would totally agree. Um, it's really, really tiny. I mean, it's almost small, too small for college-level students to look at it and try and analyze a pattern on there. But I think if I had more time, uh, the students needed to be a little bit more prepared, a little bit more background information with the content before they could really use the application part of this. I think the next time I see the students, I'm going to go back a little bit, maybe take a step back and kind of review the basics on what a tide is, make sure they're real concrete between contrasting the two different spring tide and deep tides, and then we can kind of more jump into the, okay, what does this mean? When I'm looking at this foreign tide calendar, you know, what does it mean? I think maybe I went a little bit too soon on the final application, which is why I didn't have that rich discussion that I was looking for. 